So I think there, there are lots of limitations and we really do have to be aware of those limitations when, when, when making use of bibliometric data and because it's not perfect. Some of it's more imperfect than others. If it's used properly, if it's well constructed, it can tell you something, but not everything. First limitation, uh, I would point to is that while the, the indicators are well established for science and engineering, they're not at all well established or mature for the humanities and social sciences. So you, while the indicators tend to be available in those uh, broad fields, they really do have to be taken with a pinch of salt at the moment. Um, I wouldn't put, place any reliance really on uh, even the best bibliometric indicators in the humanities and social sciences. In five years' time, it'll probably be different, but right now, it's still immature. Um, second thing is you have to guard against pathologies. It's quite possible, although unusual, um, for a publication to be cited, not because of how good it is, but because of how bad it is. Um, and that if you come up with some incredible error, or even fraud in some cases, um, that can lead to uh, uh, a particular publication being uh, highly talked about in other literatures, leading to citation data that might feed into an institution for all the wrong reasons. So you certainly don't want to do that. Um, even in the sciences and engineering where the, the, the indicators really are pretty good, it's important that they're recognized as being good at the level of, of aggregation of a large number of publications. It makes sense if you're talking about a whole university, NUI Maynooth. It makes sense if you're talking about, about a department that has a reasonable number of indicators or a reasonable number of publications um, year on year. It makes much less sense if you're talking about an indicator that somehow distills out the work of an individual, especially year on year where you're only talking about maybe a handful of publications at any given time. For individuals, there's absolutely no substitute for the expert assessment of someone who's actually reading the work and saying, this is good, this is why it's good. Um, but maybe over a whole career, it, there is some validity. But treat with caution, handle with care, I think would, would be the, the, the maxim when you're, you're talking about individuals. Um, if an individual has a very good citation record, that boosts the, the argument for quality. If, on the other hand, the numbers are, are average, there could still be some real gems in there, mm -hmm. and it, you c really can't get past that reading of it. If you just take the kind of uh, notion that particular journals mm -hmm. tend to be highly cited, lots of people substitute that idea. If I publish in certain journals, that means it must be good. It doesn't mean it must be good. It means that typically the kind of publications that turn up in those journals are good, but it doesn't tell you anything about the individual publication that might be there. So substitution of journal quality for individual uh, article quality is, is, is a pitfall that should be avoided.